Hello and welcome to this brief introductory video to Pardot. So uh, top level video, I'm just going to walk through some of the, the different areas in Pardot just to give you a bit of a feel for um, how the system behaves and what you should be looking at. So straight away, what you'll notice is we're looking at Pardot in Lightning. So a lot of the, a lot of the tabs at the top um, will look familiar to you. You can edit these um, from a profile level so you can hide and show the correct tabs based on what people need to see. Uh, but you've got this little pencil up here. So if you ever need to add and remove things, you can just um, customize the, the tabs at the top. So feel free to do so. But this is your home page. This is your dashboard. And what you're looking at, this whole video will be a demo instance. So all of the data is pretty much made up. But what you can see here is uh, a list of the prospects being created in the system. So on the right hand side, brief summary, uh, number of opportunities created, conversions means net new uh, prospects who have been created off the back of a landing page, a form, uh, but prospects created, the number will be different because you might have prospects being imported or um, prospects being created via Salesforce. So that's why those numbers might differ or be the same. Now your calendar here, so anything scheduled, um, and this isn't engagement studio emails, this is you know, list emails, scheduled, social posts, webinars, anything integrated with Pardot that you schedule in will appear on uh, this calendar here. And you can just hover over and it give you a brief summary of what those things actually are. So um, very, very useful. We'll tell you what campaign it's associated to and quite a nice snapshot of the system or marketing activities. Bottom left, Pardot will always try to proactively look for any prospects that are not assigned, so they're not in Salesforce, and it will pick the top five every day and say, look, can you review these? And you can click into this list and basically mark them as reviewed, um, or you could uh, manually assign them to a salesperson. Um, this is ideal for you know, companies like ours, where we're, um, you know, the volume's a lot lower, but the value's a lot higher. So you would proactively look for, for certain companies and just keep an eye on this section down here. And if you've got the tracking code embedded on the site, then this tool down here will try and do a reverse IP lookup uh, to see what company uh, has actually viewed the, the page or viewed the tracking code. So then you can proactively essentially cold call that business and find out um, you know, if they're interested in your, your products or services. So I'm just going to move along uh, the tabs. So moving over to prospects then, and I will point out um, any features and, and, and um, you know, capabilities that might just be specific to certain accounts. Uh, and I'll give you an example now. So what you're looking at here is a prospect list. If there's a blue cloud, it means they're in Salesforce. Um, if there's not a blue cloud, it means they're Pardot only because Pardot has its own database. Uh, you can filter from this section. So if you've got any custom fields or anything you want to show in this list, you can do so. You can export uh, lots of useful things from this view, um, particularly scoring and grading, because then you can actually find out who your best prospects are in the system and just uh, list them via top down on grade. And you can see the scores as well. But I'm just going to jump into a an example. If we go into the creator of Pardot, Adam Blitzer, we can see his example record. So from here, you can, you can delve into a lot of detail. So you've got the activities on the right hand side here. Uh, you've got the mailability status. So you can go into if it's soft bounce or hard bounce, or if it's an operational do not email. But I want to draw your attention to some of the features here. So scoring and grading, that's in every Pardot edition. You've got scoring categories, which tells us what someone's interested in. And that's in Pardot Plus and above. But then we've also got the Einstein behavior score, which is in advanced and premium. Now, this will give you a score out of 100, and it will try and work out based on lots of clever AI um, what, what their score is out of 100. So this is an 80, which is quite high. It's quite a good lead. And remember, scoring is how interested they are in us. Grading is how interested we should be in them. So it's a bi-directional metric, and you get lots of good insights off the back of this. So... Um, just wanted to draw your attention to that. Your activities are here. This is everything the prospect does when it comes to email opens, file downloads, and so on. This, um, I guess, section can be embedded onto the lead and contact records in Salesforce. So you've got a view of everything that's going on in Pardot. 
you got your custom fields. You don't need to bring every field across from Salesforce, just the ones that you're going to use for marketing and the ones that you're going to use to create your segmentation lists and so on. And you got your default fields down here on the bottom left. And the Google Analytics side of things, this will populate if the UTM parameters are present on the first touch point. Um, if it's not the first touch point, it still gets recorded, but it won't show up in this section. So if you're tracking UTM, um, just bear that in mind. I'm not going to go through all of these tabs up here, but it's good to note that there are um, there is extra detail in the prospect um, record. So you can go into to find out what profile they are when it comes to grading. You can look at the activities they've done. The audit tab is really useful because you can find out when fields have changed and why and what it was that changed them. So was it a file import? Was it a part of form fill? Was it the CRM? Um, and you can see all the automations that have impacted them. It's a really good uh, trail and history uh, to work out why things have happened. Uh, there's the custom objects integrations. There's what opportunities they're actually linked to. Um, and the life cycle was really important. So when you start to look at your scoring and grading model, you're going to want to look at the life cycle because it's working out at which point they should have been assigned versus um, you know, when they actually were assigned. And then it, you can tweak your scoring model uh, to align with that. Cool. So uh, moving on then. So campaigns are a crucial part of tracking. And I'm going to touch on analytics at the end of the video. But campaigns are key. So if go back to the prospect record just to highlight something. So you'll notice that there's source campaigns here. It's very much a one-to-one -one relationship with Pardot campaigns because it's your marketing tool. You want to know where the prospects came from. And then once you know the source campaign, there's a direct ROI. Okay, they came from this Facebook ad, but that's not the full story. You know, you come in via the Facebook ad, then you attend a webinar, then you download something, and then you might sign up for a free trial. All of these th things are touch points and you need to be recording them and leaning on Salesforce for that long history. So remember, Pardot is one-to-one, -one. Salesforce campaigns are one-to-many. So we'd go to the campaign section. Every single marketing touch point will be um, associated to a campaign. I'm not going to go into it on this video, but you want to set up a really robust and scalable campaign hierarchy because that's going to really, really level up your reporting. You know, if you go top level, it might be the marketing channel that you use. If you go down a level further, it might be the actual campaign. Um, and if you go at... If you, when it comes to your reporting, if you look at different levels, countries, geographies, currencies, and factoring all these things in, you'll get a really good uh, granular view at each level um, and you can f change it accordingly. That will be a lot clearer once I go to analytics at the end of the video. Uh, so apologies if that was a little bit unclear or vague. So these are the campaigns. Make sure at every touch point you're adding them to the campaign. And I can show you how to do that via the automation tab. You can do it via Engagement Studio and you can create your paths. I recommend at the very first um, addition to an Engagement Studio is the addition to the campaign. So if I go into this, this, cam uh, this canvas here, go to the top, I can simply add them to Salesforce campaign, save that as an action and then they're added to the campaign. Remember to use member statuses as well because they're really effective and you can do loads of clever stuff. Like you can work out um, net new versus existing prospects and, and you have a really nice pie chart in Salesforce to, to show um, you know, the reporting between the two. We've set that up for a lot of clients and it's quite effective. So this is the engagement studio. This is where you'd set up your, your processes and your marketing automation journeys. It doesn't have to be an email send, you can manage processes, assignments, and so on. Uh, but this is a really effective use of automation in a visual way as well. But then your automation rules, these are going to run in the background. Things like lead assignment, when you hit a certain scoring threshold or a grading threshold, you're going to want to assign them. But then, again, you can add them to Salesforce campaigns as a, as a touch point with member statuses. Cool. Page actions. This is a very underutilized part of the system. You can essentially uh, call out when someone views a certain page. For example, we've got an app. Um, we measure or record every time someone hits the pricing page or, um, or the login page. And then we can do things like, okay, so you viewed the login page, but you didn't log in and would measure that via the form completion. So 
There's lots of clever things you can do. And we've written a blog on retargeting within Pardot. So you can say if someone's viewed a particular page on the website, um, if someone's, well, if someone's viewed a landing page, which is slightly different automation, but then you can do things off the back of it. So loads of clever automation that uh, you can run off the back of this. But the cool thing is you can call it as a priority page, which means it shows in Salesforce, but then you can also factor them into scoring categories. So if you view this particular page, I'm going to add 12 points onto this scoring category, and then you can build up uh, and work out what someone's interested in. And you can use wildcards too. So every page beyond this page, we're going to track this under this one page action. So it's really handy for blogs. And if you've structured your blog categories in such a way, it makes this so much easier to manage uh, and it becomes a really nice, um, yeah, a nice way of, of working. Moving to lists then, so the two main types of lists, there's um, a static list and a dynamic list. Difference between the two, I normally say is push and pull. So uh, a static list, you need to push prospects in. So it might be that someone added them to that list from Salesforce via an automation rule, via an import. And the dynamic list is the opposite, it's a pull. So with a dynamic list, you have to meet a certain uh, criteria to be able to, to be added to the list. You can't manually add someone to the list. You have to meet a criteria. And this, in this instance, it's a tag. The only way, the only possible way you can enter this list is if you have the tag competitor. There's no other way of entering this list. The reason why this is useful is because MarCloud, for example, we have a dynamic list of anyone who's received an email in the last 14 days because we don't want to bombard people with emails. So that dynamic list runs all the time. Um, as soon as the 14 day threshold uh, is met, they're allowed back into the email campaigns. They receive another email if they're in one, in a campaign, uh, and then they're back into the list. So we protect people's inboxes. It's a really nice, effective use of, of dynamic lists. Now we've got Pardot email here. Now this is the original email builder. So when we're looking at um, templates and, and list emails, it's gonna look like this. It's not drag and drop. Um, if you're familiar with code, this is amazing because you can get it exactly how you want to. Um, but then if you want a drag and drop element to it, you can go to the email content tab uh, and assuming you've set up the drag and drop builders, you can then just use the drag and drop builder, which is quite a cool um, addition to, uh, to Pardot. Touched on a couple of other areas then. So we've got content so where you can create your forms, your landing pages, uh, multivariate tests is cool because you can A, B, C, D test landing pages, custom redirects. If you use third parties and host links elsewhere, you can track um, and associate the source campaign there. Um, really, really useful feature, especially with advertising and so on. Dynamic content, obviously available in plus and above, um, and you can change content in emails or on the website actually based on um, certain profile information. Snippets of productivity and efficiency tool, um, which is only available in the Pardot and Lightning app. So make sure you're using this one. Files where your assets are stored, folders, which links directly in with scoring categories. So you can basically say, look, any uh, events, we're going to add it to the scoring category events. So any assets saved in here rolls up to that scoring category. Tags, social media, um, search is being deprecated, I believe. Um, oh, no, sorry. This is the competitor monitoring and keyword tracking. So this is more read-only information. Um, and then product reports, which is your out of the box reports. These are not customizable, but they are interactive. You can look at your ROI on uh, direct ROI on specific campaigns, that one-to-one -one relationship, as I mentioned earlier. Again, always use uh, contact roles and opportunities to get this working. And then in the tabs here, you've got your Salesforce reports. So this is hosted in Salesforce. If you're an admin, you'll have access to Pardot settings where you can configure scoring categories, domain management, make sure everything's HTTPS, um, make sure you custom domain set up, email sending domain. This is where you're doing your, your backend admin. Um, and we can touch on this in a, in a later video. I'm just going to briefly jump over to B2B marketing analytics, which is available in Pardot plus and above. If you've got advanced or premium, you get even more features. But the gist of this is back to my earlier point, if you're using Salesforce campaigns as touch points. And if you're using it effectively, you can end up with this really nice attribution uh, report, which gives you ROI on each of the touch points. So you can actually um, 
attribute ROI to a webinar, for example, even though it doesn't directly uh, generate revenue or leads, um, it's, it's a really effective use of the system. This data-driven model is available in advanced and premium, and this leans on AI to work out what the um, uh, revenue or ROI actually is, but you can also create your own models. So you can have a, you can use a Salesforce model, you can use first touch, last touch, even distribution, um, and it will tell you different views of the same um, sort of revenue, if that makes sense. So um, play around with this, you can create custom reports, and there are four other out-of-the-box reports. Um, basically play around, see what you can see, um, and if you need a hand of any of it, just let us know.